how to succeed as a pastor without exploiting people oh this is a good one this is a good one number one understand that your your blessing is not in your church it's in your call in your call when you take your eyes off what is in their pocket god will open the heavens for you never focus on what they can give you it will it will affect your message it will affect how to how you father them it you can't correct the, anyone who you feel is giving you more you can't correct them so understand that your blessing is not in the church in the call number two understand it is a sin to make people give grudgingly it's a sin when you try to convince people compel them compel even from the altar you spend 30 minutes you are compelling compelling compel, you're already living in sin give people opportunity to give willingly let them give god love it a cheerful giver number three get something by the side as a pastor empower yourself empower your wife get something by the side paul was a tent maker get something doing i don't advise people to get into full-time ministry until their part-time ministry has become so grown that it consumes them when all you do is having service in the, in the evening with a few members why are you full-time work do something when there's a crowd that you can't even attend to everybody you you, you go off full-time you go off part-time rather and become full-time and also number four live in contentment many pastors are not actually poor they are just greedy and they are they are living ahead of their time live you see a young man he wants to buy the best of cars he wants to have a convoy of course he's going to exploit people to maintain that lifestyle he wants to have you see a young man when i see young preachers who just began ministry they have escorts they have this i wonder if you're doing this now what will you do in the next 25 30 years so live within your means as a minister of god i have no shadow of doubt that this video is going to be a blessing unto you don't forget to subscribe to this channel and give me a thumbs up if you really like this video watch the full video next to this one your financial source determines your end god hates thieves god hates thieves this may sound harsh it may not be what you would like to hear but god said in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 8 i hate robbery any money you have and somebody else is crying is a stolen money anything at all you acquire at the detriment of someone else's peace is stolen you came to church and collected someone's phone someone else is crying you have gained god says i hate it there is a curse a fundamental curse am i communicating here am i communicating here the bible says proverbs 13 verse 7 he that maketh himself rich become poor there are people that want to make themselves rich there is he that maketh himself rich yet at nothing there are people who, who will do everything by themselves in their pursuit of wealth they cut corners and i told you shortcut is the longest cut they cut corners cut corners hurt people make people cry make people feel pain when money is get gotten illegally it fails who is crying because you are rich who is weeping now after you bought your car who is crying who was short change because you built a house you are dedicating a house that you built and somebody is crying for money that he lost you are dedicating an empire a fleet of cars you bought thank god for that but someone is crying because of money he has lost somebody trusted you and you betrayed the trust now you are rich you don't care about values you don't care about character you don't care about name you don't care about image all you want is just get the money <laughs> i wish i was talking to somebody here. proverbs 28 22 i told you we are doing more like a bible study this morning proverbs 28 22 proverbs 28 22 he that hasted to be rich had an evil eye 
and considered not that poverty shall come upon him. Somebody say, God forbid. Check the message translation on that. And other translations. A miser in a hurry to get rich doesn't know he will end up broke. He who has an evil and envious eye hurries to be rich and does not know poverty shall come upon him. Selfish people are in such a hurry to get rich. And they don't know that when they don't know when poverty is about to strike. A greedy man in a race to get rich. He's in a race to get rich, but he forgets that he could lose what's most important and end up with nothing. I told us before that if you see life as a rat race, even when, if you win the race, you remain a rat. If you see life, your outlook to life is that it is a rat race. It means that even if you win the race, you remain a rat. Because that's your outlook to life. I know many of you will not like me this morning, but it's fine. Everywhere is quiet. It's okay. God is angry. He's letting that stone. Still no more. Ephesians 4 verse 28. Let him walk with his hand. Meaning that thing you stole, you can actually walk for it. Anything you are attracted to steal is what you can actually work and get originally. He let him that steal, that store steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hand that which is good. Why would you steal what you can work for? Why would you steal what you can legitimately acquire? Why would you steal what can come? It's just a matter of time. Why would you steal what can come to you honorably? There are people today who, are, who have taken what is not the ass. In every facet of life. We, see, we have seen politicians at not the prime. In their 50s and all. Oh, they are plagued with infirmities that are incurable. We have seen all kinds of attacks on people in the academic world. In the medical world. There are, there are you see... Can I say this? There are medical doctors today who are rich. Very rich. How they make their money is a D and C. How they make their money is illegal practices. They are rich. As far as they are concerned. That's stealing. Anything you get material and someone else is left in pain. Anything you acquire at the detriment of someone else's joy, true prosperity as it comes to you, it does not leave anyone in sorrow. True riches as it enters your hand, it brings joy to those around you. Riches that you only exclaim about is poverty in disguise. Can I repeat that? Riches that you only exclaim about is poverty in disguise. So we need to get a proper perspective. A proper perspective. Hmm. Hmm. Hallelujah. Exodus 20, 20 verse 15. Thou shall not steal. So money fails when it's gotten illegally. Thank you for watching the video to this far. I have a book for you in the description entitled The Money Secret. Get this book from Amazon or send a free donation to the number on the screen and I'll forward a soft copy to you wherever you find yourself. Always remember, winners never quit and quitters never win. Yes, we can. I don't have time. What was the key to the blessing Solomon had? If you read 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 4, the Bible says, when Pastor Lewis was reading that, was the 
great high place. A thousand burnt offering did Solomon offer upon the altar. Bring up the message translation. The king went to Gibeon, the most prestigious of the local shrine, to worship. He sacrificed a thousand whole burnt offering on the altar. Too much money. How did Solomon get to that point where there was so much money? Number one, sacrifice. One thousand. When people go and offend the Lord, the Bible tells them they bring a ram, they bring a bullock, they bring one, they bring two, they bring three. Solomon brought one thousand. Sir, one thousand. Spirit don't appear on empty altars. Spirit don't manifest on empty altars. <gasps> Solomon was giving spirits came. Spirits appeared. God spoke. Solomon had the voice of God. God called. When men give, God tells them what he will bless them with. Solomon gave and God called his name. Solomon dropped 100. God was watching. Solomon dropped 200. God was watching. Solomon dropped 500. God said, ah, ah. Solomon dropped 800. God said, what? Solomon dropped 900. God said, what? Solomon dropped 1,000. And God shouted, Solomon! If you want to be rich financially, you give financially. If listen, what you sow is what you read. You sow prayer, you read prayer. You sow it is well, you will reap it is well. Good measure, press down, shaking together. You can never sow prayer and reap money. If not, all prayer warriors would have been millionaires. What you sow is what you reap. You reap more, you sow more grace, you reap more grace. Am I communicating here? You sow money. If you want money, deliberately sacrifice money. They offered it to David. Take and take the field. And sacrifice to the Lord. Second Samuel 24, 24. I will not give to God that which cost me nothing. If it is cheap, I'm not giving God. Many of you have not given sacrifice. What is a sacrifice? Something you give, your, your blood pressure goes up. Something you give, people say, hey, they don't mugu you. You know, sometimes when I see people in the world who think they are smart, no, I'm so can collect my money. Me, I am many, many wines. Well, that's why me, I don't know, go to church again, oh, and they stay in my house. Since you stop going to church, as church closed, you were, in fact, you were a problem to the church. Since you entered the church, no peace, no peace for pastor, no peace for member. Even the prince of peace is looking for peace because of your wahala. You don't know, many of you don't know as pastors, there are certain members we secretly pray they should stop coming. But not to offend God, that's why we can't tell them don't come. In our heart, we pray, say, God, Father, in the name of Jesus, bring in souls, but remove Amaka, remove Amaka, bring in souls, oh, but remove Alex, bring in souls. There are some we are praying, say, son. Because some people's exits of the, from the church is the entry of 20 people. Many of you don't know that because of you, that's why some people don't come to this church. They like me, they have no problem with me. But you are the they say so long Agbe Susu is going to that church. So long Okokobioko is a member of that church. <laughs> Sacrifice. Sir, when we give, we are not giving because a pastor is smart. We are not giving because you spoke to us and convinced us. You can't convince us. We are giving because we love God. We are giving to God. So we don't care. I don't care what, I, what happens to my money when I give it. I care the God I gave it to. I don't care what anybody does with my money when I give it. I am giving to God. My eyes are ever toward the Lord. For he shall pluck my feet out of the net. I'm giving to God. Can I say this? We don't give because men convinced us. We give because we are spiritual. We don't give because men convinced us. We give because we are spiritual. So when anybody tries to confess, oh, they are collecting your money, tell them, I'm not giving to them, I'm giving to God. I'm not giving to them. 
I'm giving to God. Am I communicating here? Never check what is leaving you. Check where it's going to. Lay up treasures. Don't check what is leaving you. Check where it's going to. So many people that it doesn't matter. I'm telling you the truth. There are stranded people in every profession. Once they are not givers, they are not sacrificial givers. One thousand. I was doing a study on the sacrifice of Solomon and I discovered that in Gibeon, when Solomon sacrificed 1,000 burnt offering, as soon as he sliced and cut off their neck, it, what, the, what, what the, 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 the study I did said, there was a flood of blood. Flood of blood. Everywhere littered. And that was the generation of blood sacrifice. God looked. What? What somebody has never done before. Proud to that time. What? What? You must do something unusual to get something uncommon. Common offerings and common seed. Trees and nations where they have pictures of living men. They all struggle and the money goes back to that system. I'm not going to call countries. There are countries where there's a country, somebody died, the son took over and has entered currency. Check that country. There's a spirit in that country. Everybody lives for the country. Everybody lives. If you enter there, you just suddenly discover that every money you are seeing is to pay, 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 pay. Because the man is still alive. And it, in the realm of the spirit, it's an error to put a living man on currency. Because money is a spirit. It's only dead men's picture that should appear there so that their spirits can rest. Am I, am I talking to somebody here? Yeah? You see money as paper. But he said riches can have wings and fly. Proverbs 23 verse 5. They, can, they take wings and they fly. Meaning there is an angel called the angel of money. When he enters a man's house, the man begins to enjoy too much money. Sacrifice. What has left you 